In this video, I'll show you how to use the Spotify API from Python code. Specifically, I'll show you how to get your Spotify access token and then how to use that token to interact with different API endpoints. Once we know how to do that, we'll write a basic program that will allow us to search for an artist and see the top tracks that were written by that artist. After going through this video, you should have a good understanding of how the Spotify API works and how you can use it for more complex projects. Now, before I get into it, I will mention that my name is Tim. I'm a developer advocate for Linode, and I run the Tech with Tim YouTube channel where I have hundreds of other programming tutorials, so feel free to check that out. I hope you're looking forward to the video. And with that said, let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we need to do here to interact with the Spotify API is create a Spotify project or application. Now, we can do that from the Spotify developer website. The URL is developer.spotify.com. Now, from this website, you're going to want to go to your dashboard and sign into your Spotify account. So let me do that and then I will be right back. All right, so I've just signed into my account and it's brought me to my dashboard. And you can see here I have some existing applications that I've worked with in previous videos. Now for this video, we'll create a new application. Most of you won't have any here, so just click Create App. Now from Create App, you need to give it a name and a description. It doesn't matter what you put here, so anything will work. I will say Python Spotify API uh, and then Python Spotify API for the description as well. Okay, so after creating this project here, what we're going to want to look for is the client ID and the client secret. Now, within this project, we can also view information about our usage. So how many people have actually utilized this API, how many requests have been sent, etc. We don't really care about that for this project, but it is nice to know if you're working on a larger project where you're going to have some kind of backend server that's maybe sending requests on behalf of a specific user. So again, what we want here is our client ID and our client secret. And where we're going to be putting this is in an environment variable file. So let's actually set that up first so that we have a place to copy this into. So on the left hand side of my screen, you can see I'm inside of Visual Studio Code. This is the code editor I'll use for this tutorial. Feel free to use whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to be using Python, specifically Python version 3.10. However, this should work with any modern version of Python. So I'm inside a new folder here in VS Code, and I'm going to create a new file, and I'm just going to call this .env. Now, this is where I'll store my environment variables for my client ID and my client secret. So I'm going to create a variable here, client and then ID, and this will be equal to the client ID here. So let me copy this in. And then we need to do the same with our client secret. So let's create that variable and let's show the client secret. Obviously, you don't want to show this to people, but for the video, this is OK. I will delete this project afterwards and then paste the client secret inside of here. OK, so now that we have the client ID and the client secret, we don't actually need access to this page anymore. So let's close that and head into Visual Studio Code. Now that we're here, let's create a Python file and see how we can load in our environment variables and use those to request a Spotify access token. All right, so I'll go here to create new file. I can just call this something simple like main.py. And at the top of my program here, I need to import a module that we actually need to install. So I'm going to go to my terminal here. Let me just clear this. And there's two pip packages that we need to install uh, for this tutorial to work. Now, the first is going to be python.env. Now, this allows us to very easily load in our environment variable files and just makes working with environment variables much easier. So let's install that. And if for some reason this command does not work for you, then you may try pip3 install python.env, especially if you're on Mac or Linux. Alternatively, you can try python m pip install and then the package name or python3 m pip install. So try one of those four commands and that should ideally work for you. Otherwise, you will need to add your pip to your system path. Okay, so now that we've installed python.env, the next module we're going to need is the request module. So I'm gonna say pip install and then request like that. Again, try pip3 or python m pip install uh, if this command does not work for you. OK, so you can see I already have these satisfied, but that's all we need to install uh, for the rest of the tutorial. So now at the top of our program, we're going to import the .env package. Specifically, we'll say from .env import load.env. And then we're just going to call this function, and this will automatically load our environment variable files for us. Now, they're only going to load if you've named them .env. So make sure you have a .env file in the same directory as your Python script. 
Now that we have that, let's load in our client ID and our client secret. We can print them out and just make sure it's working. Then we can move on to doing our authorization and getting our token that we can use based on our client ID and our client secret. So I'm going to say client ID is equal to and this reminds me I now need to import the OS module and it's going to be OS dot get ENV, which will get the value of an environment variable. And in this case, we want client ID. Now we'll want the same thing down here, but this time it will be the secret. So let's just change the text here. OK, so now we should be getting these values. So let's print them out. Client ID and the client secret. And I will run my code by pressing the run button here and let's see if this works. And notice it does. We get our client ID and our client secret. Perfect. So now that that is working, let's quickly have a conversation about how authorization works for the Spotify API. So the first thing to understand here is that authorization and authentication differs based on the different APIs that you're using. For us, we're going to be using an API that just allows us to query information about the Spotify library. So artists, album, playlists, um, songs, tracks, etc. Right. However, there is another aspect of the Spotify API that allows you to control somebody's Spotify player and to have information about a specific user's profile or their playlist. We're not going to be using that part. That actually requires that you authenticate a individual user. And usually that's done through some kind of website or front end user interface. In our case, since we're using a back end uh, kind of script here or a CLI script, we're going to be doing this just using our client ID and our client secret. So actually, let me just pop up a little diagram here from the Spotify documentation to show you exactly what we're going to do. So again, we're using the client credentials workflow. There is another workflow for user credentials, and that's specific users using your application. In this case, we just have one set of credentials and anyone who runs our Python script will be using that set of credentials. OK, so here we have our application. Now, the first thing we need to do is request an access token. We do that by sending our client ID, the client secret and a few other pieces of information that I'll get into to the Spotify accounts service. Now, this is a different service than the main API. This service then returns to us a temporary access token that I believe has an expiry of 10 minutes. It's either one hour or 10 minutes. I can't remember the exact time frame. Either way, it has some expiry date on it. It then gives us that access token and having that access token, we can then send requests to the Spotify web API, which you can see right here, which allows us to get information about artists, tracks, albums, playlists, etc. So fairly straightforward, but there is kind of a multi-step process here. And one thing to note is that if your token does expire, then you need to request a new token or use something known as a refresh token. But we're not going to get into that in this video. OK, so now that we understand that, I will just walk you through exactly what we need to do to get this token. So it's actually a little bit complicated. Spotify doesn't make it super simple. You can see here that we need to send in our request body a grant type, and that grant type needs to say client credentials, specifying that we're going to be sending our client ID and our client secret. And we need to have our data encoded in this format. We also need to send this to the slash API slash token endpoint, which is associated with the, if I could find it here, uh, where is the URL? The accounts.spotify.com URL. Okay, so this is the base URL. Then we have headers. So we need to pass our authorization header, which I will show you how to create, as well as the grant type. Once we do that, it will give us our access token and the expiry time store. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write a function here from inside of my Python code. We can get rid of this print statement and I'm going to call this get underscore token because, of course, that is the first step that we need. So inside of get token, I'm going to create the authorization string that I actually need to encode with base 64. Now, again, this is a little bit weird and complicated, but essentially what we need to do is take our client ID, concatenate it to our client secret, and then encode that using a base64 encoding. And that's what we need to send to retrieve our authorization token. So I'll show you how we do that, but it is a few steps. So I actually need to import up here base64, which is a built in module in Python. And then I'm going to go here and say my authorization string is equal to my client ID plus a colon, very important that you have the colon, plus my client secret. Now that I have that string, I actually need to encode it. So I'm going to say auth bytes is equal to, and then this is going to be auth string dot encode. And I'm going to encode this with UTF-8. Then I need to encode this using base64. 
So I'm going to say auth base 64 is equal to, then I'm going to say string, and this is going to be base 64.b64 in code. I'm going to pass to this my authorization bytes, and then I'm going to pass UTF-8 here for turning this into a string. Again, I know it seems a bit strange, but this returns a base64 object of some sort, but we need to convert that into a string so that we can pass that with our headers when we send the request to the kind of accounts service API. All right, so now we're going to write out the URL that we want to send a request to. So this is going to be https colon slash slash accounts dot spotify dot com slash API slash token. And then we need to create our headers. So headers are going to be associated with our request. We're going to be sending a post request to this URL. So the first header that we need is our authorization header. Make sure you spell this correctly, which I did not. And for our authorization header, we are going to pass the string basic up uh, an empty space here. Make sure you have a space plus, and then we're going to have our auth base 64 string. So this is where we're sending in our authorization data, and this is where it will verify that everything is correct and then send back to us the token. Next, we need to specify our content type. Now, unlike usually where we have our application JSON here, we actually have to have this type, which I'm going to copy in just to make sure that I don't mess it up. So the type here is application slash X uh, dash www dash form dash URL encoded. Okay, so that is all we need for our headers. The next thing that we need is our data. Now, as it said on the website there, what we need to pass is a grant type and the grant type needs to be equal to client underscore credentials like that. And I believe it's a plural. Yes, it is a plural. Okay, so now that we have our URL, our headers and our data, we are ready to formulate the response or the request, sorry. So I'm going to go up at the top of my program and say from requests import post, which allows us to send a post request. I'm then going to say a result is equal to post. And I'm going to post my URL with headers equal to my headers and my data equal to my data. Really, this is like the body of the request. Okay. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to be returned some JSON data in a field known as content from this result object. So what I want to do is convert that JSON data uh, into a Python dictionary so I can actually access the information that's inside of it. So really it'll be a JSON string. We want to convert it to a Python dictionary. So I'm going to say my JSON underscore result is equal to JSON dot load S, which stands for load from string. And then the string I'm going to be loading from is result dot content. Then what I can do is parse my token. My token is going to be stored in a field known as access token like that. And then I can return my token. So what we'll do now is we will call this function get token. Let's store this in a variable called token, and then we can print the token out. So we'll say print token like that. Perfect. I know that was a lot, but let's run the code, see if it works, and then we can walk through it. So I'm going to run here, and I've got an issue here. It says auth base64 referenced before assignment. Okay, that's because I made a mistake here. Let me just change this to say bytes. And now if I run the code, we should be good. And request got an unexpected argument headers. Okay, just a small typo. My apologies. So let's clean that up and rerun. And JSON is not defined. Okay, another error. Let's import the JSON module. This is the beauty of debugging live on video. And if I run again, now you can see that we get our access token. All right, so apologize about a few mistakes there, but you can see that we just needed to add JSON. We just had to change the name here, which I'm sure many of you already caught, and then fix the headers spelling mistake. Okay, so now that we have access to our authorization token, this is what we need to use in any future headers uh, when we are trying to send a request to the API to get some artist information, playlist information, whatever it may be. So I'm going to make a function here just for convenience that will kind of construct the header that we need uh, whenever we're sending another request. So I'm going to say define, and this will say get auth headers like this, or actually it's just going to be header because we actually only have one. We're going to take the token here and we're going to return the following header authorization. Again, need to spell this correctly. And then this is going to be bearer space plus the token. 
So that's all you need for the authorization header for any future requests. You got to use this API token. Okay, now that we have that, let's write a function that allows us to, for example, search for an artist. Now I'll bring up the documentation so you can see all of the different things you can do with the Spotify API. What I'd like to do here is just write a simple program that allows us to search for an artist and then get all of that artist's top tracks. All right, so I've just brought up the Spotify API documentation. There is quite a bit of documentation here, but I'll quickly click through a few things and you can see what we can do. So we have access to albums, artists, right? Audiobooks, browse, chapters, all kinds of stuff here. And really just shows you what the URL is going to be, as well as um, kind of all of the values or parameters that you need to pass to get specific information. Now, you'll notice here when we're looking at, for example, the artist endpoints, and we want to get the top tracks of an artist, uh, it requires that we pass an ID for that artist. You can see it is a required field. Now, the issue is I can't find the ID of an artist unless I know what that artist is or I know what the ID is already. So I need to kind of search for an artist, find the artist I'm looking for, and then grab the ID from them. So the way you do that is you go to search here and you can see we have V1 search. And if I click into this, it shows you all of the different uh, values you can pass as query parameters to this search URL. So we have Q, which is our query string. I'll show you how we construct that in a minute. And then we have type. Now type is specifying what result we want to get back from this search. In our case, we'll be searching for an artist, but you can see we could be searching for a track. We could be searching for both a track or an artist, all kinds of things we can look for here. So really the step is going to be search for an artist, find the artist we're looking for, get their ID, and then get the tracks associated with them. Obviously, if you want to do something different, you can have a look at the documentation. It's pretty straightforward. And what I'll show you here will kind of translate into any other endpoint you want to call. So let's just look at this endpoint here. It is HTTPS colon slash slash api.spotify.com slash v1 slash search. So let me just save that. We'll go into VS Code uh, and let me make a function here that is going to search for artist. Okay, now we need the token as well as the artist name that we want to be searching for in this function. So let's start by defining our URL. We'll say our URL is equal to this if we can put it inside of a string. Okay, perfect. And then we want to get our headers. So I'm going to say my headers is equal to get auth header and I will pass my token. And now I need to construct my query. So to construct a query for this search uh, API endpoint is actually a little bit unintuitive, uh, but we're going to do the following. We're going to say query is equal to, we're going to use a Python F string. We're going to say Q, which is the query string, is equal to, and then the first thing we're going to place here is whatever the text value is that we're searching for. So in this case, I'm going to be searching for the artist name, but if I was searching for a track name or searching for any other name, whatever the value is I'm looking for, I would place it here. Okay, so after I do that, then I'm going to put an ampersand, and the next argument that I want to have here is type. Now, for the type, I need to specify a comma delimited list of things I could potentially be looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for an artist, but if I was looking for an artist and a track, I would do artist comma track, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, after that, we have some optional arguments we can pass, but in my case, I only want to get the most popular artist associated with this search result. So I'm going to say limit equals one. So it just gives me the first artist that pops up when I search for this specific name. Now, it is possible that no artist will appear if I type in an artist name that doesn't exist, uh, but the chance is that there'll be many artists that show up when I search for even a popular artist. So I just want to grab the first one, and then we can kind of parse that out and use it. Okay, so now that we have our main URL and kind of the query component, uh, which is really the query parameters of this URL, I want to combine them together. So I'm going to say my query URL is equal to URL plus a question mark plus my query. Now, given I could just put the question mark here, then I could remove the question mark, uh, and that would probably make it a little bit clear. Okay. Now that we've done that, I want to use the get method for this uh, endpoint. So this other endpoint here, we were using post. Uh, can I find post right here? We want to use get now. So I'm going to import get here, go back down, and I'm going to say result is equal to get. I'm going to pass my query URL. And I'm going to say headers is equal to my headers. Okay, now similarly to up here, we need to kind of parse this JSON result. So I'm going to say JSON result is equal to json.loads result.content. 
And for now, let's print this out. Let's see what we're getting and then we can go from there. So I'm going to print JSON result. Okay. So now that we have our token, let's call this function. So search for artist. And for the artist name, uh, let's just pass kind of a popular artist here. Let's go with something like ACDC. I guess that's more of a band, but that should show up. Uh, and we'll see the result that we get. Okay, so let's run the code here and see if we get anything. And it said we got an unexpected argument. Okay, again, got to fix this. So it says headers instead of header. My apologies. Let's clear and rerun and notice that we get kind of this gibberish result appearing. So inside of here, if you can see, we're getting a field that says artists. And then within this, we're getting items. So what we actually want to do is we want to start by grabbing this artist value. That kind of gives us this whole JSON object or Python dictionary, whatever you want to refer to it as. Then I want to grab items because items is what contains all of my different results. What I'm highlighting here is actually one artist result uh, that I got. So I want to get that result. If we have at least one of them, then we will look up the songs for that artist. Otherwise, we'll just print out some message saying, hey, no artist exists with this name. Okay, so let's do that. Let's clear and close this. Uh, oops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> let's go back down. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to say JSON results equal to this. And I'm going to say artists and then items, which are fields that are always going to exist. Now I'm going to say if my JSON result, actually we'll have to get the length of this. So if the length of JSON result is equal to zero, then we're going to print no artist with this name exists dot 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 and we will return none otherwise we will return the json result and we will return the very first result like that okay so i think that should be good now let's try this again but we're going to instead say result is equal to this and then we're going to print the result, which this time should just give us the individual artist. Okay, so let's run this code and notice that we get just the artist. We're not getting any of the other information. Now, just to make sure everything's working, let's print out the name of the artist. So let's close this and do result. And we can say name like that. And if I run the code, notice that I get AC slash DC. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have our artist. What we want to do is get the ID of the artist. Now that ID is stored in the ID field. So I'm going to say my artist underscore ID is equal to result at ID. And now that I have that, I can look up the songs for this artist. Now I won't go back to the documentation. I do have the uh, URL in front of me. So I'll just plug it in here and you'll see how that works. So I'm going to say define get songs by artist like that. And I'm going to take token and my artist underscore ID. Now, similarly to before, I need to have my URL. I'll just copy this because it's going to be similar. Rather than search, it's going to be artist slash, and then it's going to be the ID slash, and then this is going to be top and dash tracks, question mark, country is equal to US. Now I'm going to make this an F string, and inside of here, I'm going to pass my artist ID. Okay, so let me explain what I'm doing here. So we have, again, our base URL, and then we're looking for a specific artist. And actually, this needs to be a plural, sorry. So let's make this artist. Then I pass my artist ID, which is the specific artist I'm looking for, and then I want the top tracks. Now, when I do this, I do have to pass a country here uh, for it to kind of rank the top tracks by. So a valid country is US. You can also do, say, CA. Uh, any kind of two-digit country code you can think of is going to be valid. So just place that here for the country that you're looking for. Okay, so now that we have our URL, again, I want to get my headers. So let's just copy this line from here. And now that we have that, that should be all we need to do to actually send this request. So I'm going to say result is equal to get. I'm going to say URL and then headers is equal to headers. And then again, we need to parse this using JSON. So let's grab this here. Uh, and this time, is it going to be artists? No, I believe it's going to be tracks that we want to grab and then items. And then we can say return our JSON result. And let's go here now and say songs is equal to get songs by artist. We'll pass our token and artist ID and we'll then print out the songs and then we'll make them look a little bit better in just one second.
All right, so I was about to run the code, but I just realized we need to actually remove items here. My apologies. So just get rid of items and then we should be good to go. OK, so let's run this and see what we get. All right, perfect. So we have all of these tracks. Uh, they're not very readable, obviously. But now what we can do is print them out in a more readable format and kind of view the name of each of the tracks that we have. So let's close this terminal. OK, so now that we have our songs, let's loop through them. So let's say four and we'll go with IDX comma song in enumerate. And then we will enumerate our songs like that. And then what we'll do is we'll print our IDX plus one. And then we will do actually we're going to do this a little bit differently. We'll do an F string. We're going to say IDX plus one dot. And then this is going to be the song and the name just so we get kind of an ordered list here. I need to use my single quotation marks. Otherwise, my F string will break. All right, let's give this a shot again and see what we're getting now. And there we go. We have our top 10 songs by this artist. Awesome. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I will quickly scroll through the code and zoom out a little bit in case you guys want to view all of it at once uh, and kind of copy any of it down. But this is how you use the Spotify API. Really, the difficult aspect here is getting the authorization token correct, knowing how to encode it using base 64 and then how to send kind of the correct authorization headers afterwards. Once you figure that out, it's very easy to use the API and you can reference the Spotify documentation to find any specific information that you're looking for. With that said, I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in another one.